Welcome to the Horror Hour, where your darkest fears come to life. Each episode delves into spine-chilling tales, eerie phenomena, and the unsettling unknown. Join me as we explore the stories that make your skin crawl and your imagination race. Turn down the lights and let the horror begin. The Laughter in Darkness The basement of the old theater smelled of stale air and forgotten dreams. Dust danced in the solitary beams of light that broke through the grimy windows. The red velvet seats, threadbare and faded, stood as silent witnesses to countless performances, their plushness long since eroded by time and neglect. It was here, beneath the forgotten grandeur of the crumbling playhouse, that Max Anders held his court, a stage set for laughter and horror to intertwine. Max Anders was a man of contradictions. On stage, he was a maestro of dark humor, his words a symphony of twisted tales and macabre wit. The audience adored him, their laughter a testament to his ability to weave horror into comedy with chilling finesse. They did not see the darkness that lurked behind his eyes, the gleam of something far more sinister than mere stagecraft. His routines were notorious, each performance a blend of gruesome anecdotes and biting satire. Max delighted in recounting his fictitious escapades with a gleeful abandon, his face a mask of mirth. But the truth was far more disturbing. The stories he spun were not purely products of his imagination. They were reflections of a reality that he had crafted with meticulous care, a reality steeped in blood and shadows. Claire Mercer had never intended to visit the old theater that night. Her curiosity had led her there, drawn by whispers of a comedian whose act delved into the darker corners of the human psyche. She had always harbored a fascination with the macabre, an interest that often brought her to unusual places. When she stumbled upon Max Anders's show, she was captivated by his unsettling charisma. The audience around her was enraptured, their laughter echoing off the worn walls. Claire, however, felt a chill as Max described one particularly gruesome scenario. The tale bore an eerie resemblance to a memory she could scarcely bear to revisit. Months earlier, in a deserted alleyway, she had witnessed a scene of unspeakable horror, one that matched Max's story with disturbing accuracy. Her heart raced as she listened, her fear mounting with each line of his grotesque narrative. The laughter of the crowd seemed to drown out her growing realization. Max's stories weren't just darkly imaginative, they were disturbingly real. Claire's initial terror gave way to a cold resolve. She began to investigate Max's past, driven by the need to uncover the truth behind his horrifying tales. Her research led her to a web of disappearances and unsolved cases, each one a thread in the intricate tapestry of Max's crimes. Max's charm and wit had cloaked his malevolence for years, but Claire's discoveries painted a clear picture. She found interviews with former acquaintances, all hinting at an unsettling side to the comedian, one that had always been masked by his public persona. Claire was determined to bring him to justice, even as she became more entangled in his sinister world. As Claire delved deeper, Max sensed a shift. His performances, once exhilarating, began to feel like a dangerous game. He noticed an unfamiliar presence in the crowd, a tension that seemed to follow him. His paranoia grew, and with it, a frantic need to maintain his facade. The line between performer and predator began to blur. Max found himself increasingly unsettled by the thought that someone might see through his carefully crafted veneer. His once confident demeanor faltered as he struggled to control his fear, each performance becoming a high-stakes gamble with his sanity. The night of the confrontation arrived with a palpable sense of dread. Claire had managed to secure a seat in the front row, a position that allowed her to be as close to Max as possible. She was ready to reveal the truth, not with violence, but with evidence that would expose him to his audience. As Max began his routine, his usual bravado was marred by a subtle unease. His stories, once delivered with gleeful abandon, now carried an edge of desperation. Claire watched him closely, her heart pounding as she prepared for the moment of revelation. When Max reached the climax of his performance, Claire stood up, her voice steady as she called out his name. Max. The audience fell silent, their laughter replaced by a heavy tension. Claire held up a folder filled with documents and photographs, the damning evidence of Max's crimes. Max's face paled as he recognized the evidence, his mask of sanity slipping away. 
The once adoring crowd now witnessed the unraveling of their idol, the laughter of the evening dying in a chilling silence. Claire's courage and determination had brought the truth to light, and Max Anders's reign of terror came to an end. In the aftermath, the old theater fell silent once more, its stage now a place of haunting memories. Claire's bravery had unmasked a monster, but the echoes of laughter and horror lingered in the darkness. The theater's stories would remain etched in its walls, a testament to the collision of humor and horror, and the unrelenting pursuit of truth. Max Anders's legacy was one of chilling irony, a comedian whose greatest performance was the terrifying reality he had hidden behind his jokes. As Claire walked away from the theater, she knew that the laughter had finally faded, replaced by the somber silence of justice served. <laughs>